shaping up to be an atmospheric battle royale, a clash of titans that's going to split the United States right down the middle. And I'm here to be your guide, breaking down exactly what this means for your hometown. We've gone deep, analyzing seven similar winters going all the way back to 1989. We've crunched the numbers on every major forecast model, the American, the Canadian, the European, and they're all pointing to the same epic conclusion. For a huge chunk of you, this is going to be the snowiest winter in years. I'm talking 120 to 150% of your normal snowfall. But for the rest of you, a major snow drought is likely on the way. We're talking just 50 to 70% of your typical snowfall totals. Now, this isn't me just throwing darts at a map. This is the story of a fragile La Nina that's just barely hanging on, a polar vortex already showing signs of instability, and a Pacific decadal oscillation in its most powerful negative phase in decades. And in this video, I'm going to translate all that complex science into a simple number, the amount of snow you can expect to be shoveling. And every single piece of this forecast is backed by rock-solid science and historical precedent. But to understand where we're going, we first have to know where we've been. What does a times normal asterisk winter actually look like where you live? Using 30 years of data from 1991 to 2020, this map shows the average snowfall you typically see. If you're in one of those gray spots, think Jacksonville, Houston, or Phoenix, you guys usually get zero snow. But in the white zones, like Charlotte and Nashville, or Oklahoma City, you're used to seeing about one to five inches. Now, once we get into those light blue shades, we're talking about places like Louisville, Cincinnati, and Wichita, where you can bank on anywhere from five to 25 inches. And as we darken to that deep blue, that's your New York City, your Detroit, and your Chicago, we're talking a solid 25 to 50 inches. And just look at these pink zones, Denver, Pittsburgh, Salt Lake City, that's a hefty 50 to 75 inches. The real snow lovers live in the hot pink areas like Buffalo, where 75 to 100 inches is the norm. And then you've got these legendary dark pink zones that get absolutely buried under more than 100 inches of snow a year. Now, I want you to burn that image into your brain because what you see there is times, not times, what I believe is coming this year. This winter, the winter of 2025 through 2026 is going to be anything but average. As I laid out of my last winter forecast, we are dealing with what I've dubbed a ghostly La Nina this season. It barely met the criteria, with Pacific water temperatures sitting at just 0.3 degrees below normal. But here's the crucial thing about La Nina, even a weak one. It gives the jet stream a massive shove to the north. This forces storm tracks to cut across the northern tier of the country instead of diving south. This sets up that classic pattern, cold in the north, warm in the south. It's really that straightforward. For snowfall, this means we're gonna see a parade of those fast-moving Alberta clippers diving out of Canada and dropping a quick two to four inches of snow at a time across the Great Lakes, the Northern Plains, and deep into the interior Northeast. Now, I know two to four inches might feel more like a nuisance than a blockbuster storm, but when you're getting hit with one of those every five to seven days, those totals are gonna pile up in a hurry. And this, my friends, is the absolute textbook La Nina playbook, a steady stream of smaller storms zipping across the northern US. Now, here's the secret weapon, the key piece of the puzzle that gives me so much confidence in this forecast. It's called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or PDO for short. Just think of it as La Nina's bigger, stronger, and more influential older sibling. La Nina only affects a small slice of water in the equatorial Pacific, and it can flip-flop from one year to the next. The PDO, however, influences the entire North Pacific Ocean and operates on a much longer 20 to 30 year cycle. And right now, we are locked into the most intense negative PDO we have seen in a very long time. And a negative PDO does almost the exact same thing as La Nina. It supercharges that cold north, warm south pattern and reinforces that northerly storm track. It's like having two giants pushing in the exact same direction. It makes the signal incredibly strong, even if one of those giants is a little on the weaker side. The PDO is going to amplify everything La Nina is already trying to do. And that is precisely why, even with a wimpy La Nina, I'm betting the house on that northern storm track being the dominant player this year. 
but how can I be so certain this pattern will bring the snow I'm predicting? Well, it's because we've seen this exact movie before, not just once, but multiple times. This setup, the one we are about to experience in the winter of 2025 to 2026, has clear historical parallels. We've found seven of them over the last 35 years. We've identified seven winters with atmospheric conditions that are nearly identical to what we're seeing right now. And when you line them all up, the pattern is undeniable. Our number one analog, the winter that looks the most like this one, is 2013 to 2014. It had the same weak La Nina, the same negative PDO, and the same warm Atlantic waters. And that winter, Chicago got hammered with 82 inches of snow, Detroit was buried under 94 inches, and Boston picked up 58 inches, all of them way above their yearly average. Then you have the winter of 1995 to 1996. That's the one that delivered the historic blizzard of 96, which completely shut down the East Coast. Another fantastic match is 2017 to 2018, which brought a relentless assault of nor'easters to the East Coast. And another key analog is the winter of 1989 to 1990. That's the season that brought that legendary pre-Christmas Arctic outbreak that shattered records from Montana all the way down to Florida. When we merge all of these similar past winters into a single data set, the signal screams at you. The northern states average 115 to 130% of their typical snowfall. The southern states, meanwhile, were left high and dry with just 50 to 70% of normal. And the Great Lakes region? It blew past its average snow totals in six out of those seven years. But here is the most important insight. Every single one of those analog years featured at least one historic, unforgettable storm or cold wave, the kind of weather event we talk about for decades. And that, my friends, is not a coincidence. That is a clear pattern. And this year is at least an 85% match to those years that produced legendary cold snaps or monster blizzards. So, as the saying goes, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes, and I think you can hear the rhythm I'm hearing. I am convinced. We are going to see at least one major memorable weather event this year, whether it's a paralyzing cold snap or one of those monster snowstorms I've been talking about. But there is one thing we have to consider. Even with all this historical data pointing us in one direction, there's a wild card that could completely rewrite the script. There's a beast lurking 60,000 feet above the North Pole that could throw a major wrench in the works. And that wild card is the polar vortex. The very latest data suggests it could become unstable this winter. Here's the deal. We have something called an easterly QBO. It's another one of those long, fancy scientific terms, a quasi-biennial oscillation. But just think of it this way. You have winds way up in the stratosphere that are blowing in the opposite direction they normally do. And when that happens, it puts an incredible amount of stress on the polar vortex. You mix that with our weak La Nina and our powerfully negative PDO. And historically, this trifecta leads to a... Detroit was buried under 94 inches, and Boston picked up 58 inches, all of them way above their yearly average. Then you have the winter of 1995 to 1996. That's the one that delivered the historic blizzard of 96, which completely shut down the East Coast. Another fantastic match is 2017 to 2018, which brought a relentless assault of nor'easters to the East Coast. And another key, the same thing happened again in 2017 and 18, but that time it linked up with available moisture, which resulted in a truly epic series of snowstorms. But here is the critical catch we have to remember. While I am very confident we're going to see a couple of these polar vortex disruptions this winter, fancy scientific terms, a quasi-biennial oscillation, but just think of it this way. You have winds way up in the stratosphere that are blowing in the opposite direction they normally do. And when that happens, it puts an incredible amount of stress on the polar vortex. You mix that with our weak La Nina and our powerfully negative PDO. And historically, this trifecta leads to a 60 to 75% chance that the polar vortex will weaken or even split into pieces. And when that happens, it can unleash a torrent of brutally cold air, sending it plunging south into the United States. In fact, during one of our key analog winters, December of 1989, this exact scenario went down and it triggered a massive historic cold wave that could tip the balance and one more wild card that makes that battleground zone right in the middle of the country so incredibly difficult to forecast this year. But here's my bottom line. I don't believe it's going to change the overall theme. 
When it comes to the snow, the North is going to win and the South is going to lose. So with all of that laid out, you've been patient, you've heard the science, and you've seen the historical proof. Now, let's get to the main event. Here is exactly how much snow I believe you can expect to see in your backyard this winter. If you live north of Interstate 80, okay, all you snow fanatics, gather around, because we're about to crown this year's winter champions. If you're in Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, or upstate New York, you guys seriously hit the jackpot. High fives all around. And I can already hear you saying, Ryan, that's obvious. New York always gets more snow than Florida. But hold on, everyday snow totals. I mean, we are talking about completely shattering your annual averages. You are all gonna be swimming in so much more snow than you're used to, which is really saying something. We're forecasting a whopping 20 to 40% times above times your normal snowfall up there. Montana, you're looking at a massive 40% boost. Seriously, go book those ski trips to Big Sky and Jackson Hole. The script. There's a beast lurking 60,000 feet above the North Pole that could throw a major wrench in the works. And that wild card is the polar vortex. The very latest data suggests it could become unstable this winter. Here's the deal. We have something called an easterly QBO. It's another one of those long... When we'll see those legendary Alberta clippers come barreling down every five to seven days, each one dropping a fresh two to five inches of snow. But this is where the forecast goes from interesting to absolutely insane. The Great Lakes' lake effect snow machine is about to shift into overdrive. Why? Because the water temperatures are currently running two to four degrees warmer than usual, is going to lose. So with all of that laid out, you've been patient, you've heard the science, and you've seen the historical proof. Now, let's get to the main event. Here is exactly how much snow I believe you can expect to see in your backyard this winter. If you live north of Interstate 80, water, you are going to get slammed with thunder snow events that could unload two to three feet of snow in a single go. All right, let's cruise out west. If you live in the Cascades or the Rockies, this is the epic winter you've been dreaming about. I'm talking about places like Mount Baker potentially seeing 600 inches of snow. We're looking at you, Crystal Mountain and Stevens Pass. You are all on the list of spots that are going to get absolutely pummeled with more snow than average this year. For some of you, it could be up to 40% more. But California, even high up in the Sierras, I have to break some tough news. After two straight years of legendary snow, it seems like Mother Nature is hitting the snooze button. I'm seeing Tahoe getting around 300 to 350 inches of snow instead of the usual 400 plus inches you're used to. And down in the Southern Sierra, we might only be looking at 50% of your average snowfall for the whole year. But wait, there is a wild card. Late February could bring a massive surge of Pacific moisture. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because half of the past winters that had this exact same setup saw that exact scenario play out. So, Buffalo, you need to hear this. I am not even kidding when I say you could get buried under more than 100 inches of snow this year. And for my friends in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, how does 250 to 350 inches sound? We're not talking about feet anymore, people. We're measuring this stuff in times yards asterisk. From December through January, when those brutal Arctic systems come screaming across that warm, or you could get 35. It all comes down to the exact storm tracks. It's like baking a cake. You need that polar air to crash into the moisture at the perfect time. If that recipe comes together, you're looking at 35 inches. If it misses, it's closer to 15. Okay, let's slide over to the Ohio Valley. We're talking about you, Cincinnati. Louisville and Indianapolis. Here's the deal for you guys. I'm gonna be real with you. We're probably not looking at above average snowfall here. To be honest, you might even end up a little below average. But, and listen up, this is a huge but a lot of winters with this same pattern have delivered major ice storms to your region. So we're looking at about a 35% higher than normal chance of getting hit with a pretty gnarly ice storm this year. Now, that doesn't mean it's a sure thing. You know that old saying, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. You know what I mean? So just have a plan for that. And yeah, this is another one of those spots where if we get a perfectly timed blast of Arctic air mixing with some Gulf moisture, you times could times technically see a monster snowstorm. But honestly, I wouldn't hold my breath. Now let's head down south to Atlanta, Charlotte, and Nashville. I'm not even going to try and put a positive spin on this. You might not even get what you'd call a real winter. You feel me? This is specifically in February, and it was aimed right at Southern California. Speaking of wild cards, let's zip over to the East Coast. 
Boston, for your area, I'm thinking we'll see around 45 to 50 inches of snow. That's pretty close to normal, maybe just a little bit extra. New York City, however, is a total toss-up you could get 15 inches. Atlanta, you might squeeze out an inch of snow if you get super lucky. Charlotte and Nashville, maybe two to four inches at most. Houston, Miami, Phoenix, forget about it. If something wild were to happen down there, it would be in January or February. So keep an eye on the forecast during those months, just in case. But sadly, we're probably gonna be talking more about a couple of severe weather events down south than we are about snow. The big takeaway this year is that the North wins the snow lottery and the South loses, which definitely isn't how it always goes. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but just last year, the South was the big winner. I mean, we had that insane Gulf blizzard that dropped snow literally on the beaches of Florida. That's not in the cards this year, but there are going to be tons of places and millions of you who are about to experience one of the snowiest winters of your entire lives. And if you're one of those lucky people, or even if you're not, hey, there's always next year. Here is what you absolutely need to do. Go get yourself a Yala meter.